Starting with a look at the day's top national headlines, the New Yorker magazine reports Democrats are looking into a new claim of sexual misconduct by Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Deborah Ramirez alleges Kavanaugh exposed himself in a drunken dorm party when they were freshmen at the claims by Christine Blaisley Ford. He and Ford are scheduled to testify this Thursday before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Elsewhere, today is the start of the sentencing hearing for Bill Cosby. The man, once known as America's dad, was convicted earlier this year of drugging and molesting a woman in 2004. CBS News correspondent Laura Podesta has a preview of the hearing. Bill Cosby may very well spend the rest of his life behind bars. The 81-year-old was found guilty in April of drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constand at his Philadelphia home in 2004. At a sentencing hearing that's expected to last today and tomorrow, he could be sentenced to as many as 30 years in prison. Judgment day has finally arrived for this convicted sexual predator but Cosby's lawyers are expected to plead to keep the entertainer at home because of his age and health problems. And attorneys for the prosecution are worried some victims who testified in the trial will not be allowed to give a sentencing statement. I pray it's 30 years. He deserves it every year. We all suffered a lot. And we've stood up for many women. Mm -hmm. And he needs every single year. More than 60 women have accused Cosby of sexual misconduct. If ordered to serve time, he could be taken to a jail cell immediately. Though Cosby could also be allowed to remain out of prison until the conclusion of any legal appeals. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Over the last five months, Cosby has been on house arrest at his estate in Pennsylvania. And President Trump is in New York City this week for the United Nations General Assembly. The president is likely to tout his America First policy, stressing his dedication to U.S. interests. One year after he used the global event to ridicule North Korea, he's now expected to spotlight the threat he says Iran poses to the world. A crash in the Billings Heights that claimed the life of a 20-year-old woman and sent two others to the hospital is under investigation. The head-on crash happened early Sunday morning near Wicks Lane and Nutter Boulevard. Billings police say a car driven by a 16-year-old male first collided with a pickup truck, then fled the scene and hit another car, causing the fatal crash. When officers arrived, they found the 16-year-old unconscious with serious injuries. They also found two 20-year-old old woman in the second car. The driver was deceased and the passenger had serious injuries. Emergency crews extricated the teen and surviving passenger and both were taken to the hospital. The driver of the pickup truck that was first hit was not injured. The crash is under investigation, but police said speed and alcohol are considered factors. One person is dead and another injured following a weekend ATV crash in Park County. It happened Saturday night east of Clyde Park. The Montana Highway Patrol reports a 20-year-old woman from Modesto, California, was driving the ATV too fast for road conditions and failed to make a tight left turn. She overcorrected and lost control of the vehicle. Both the driver and a 23-year-old male passenger from Great Falls were ejected. The male passenger was declared dead at the scene. The driver was taken to the hospital and there's no word on her injuries. In Wyoming, Park County authorities are looking for vandals that cut down speed limit signs west of Cody. Seven nighttime speed limit signs were cut down late Friday or early Saturday west of Cody on U.S. Highway 141620. The Wyoming Department of Transportation is working with Park County and state law enforcement on several leads and tips. They're also asking the public for additional information from potential witnesses. Two 30 mile per hour speed limit signs were also stolen near the Buffalo Bill Dam Visitor Center. The signs were cut down with a high-powered saw. Damages are estimated in the thousands. Anyone with information is asked to call the Wyoming Highway Patrol or Park County Sheriff's Department at the numbers listed on your screen. A $260,000 project is scheduled to begin on that same highway this week. Electronic variable speed limit signs will be installed between the U.S. Forest Service boundary to the Buffalo Bill Dam parking area. Drivers should expect reduced speed limits through the work zones.
Meanwhile, back here in Montana, a ski resort is getting some national attention. For the last 30 years, Ski Magazine has asked their readers to rank resorts based on different categories. This year, Whitefish Mountain takes the top spot. The resort issue of Ski Magazine hits newsstands tomorrow, with Whitefish Mountain Resort coming in as the best in the West for overall customer satisfaction. Other factors helping Whitefish Mountain reel in this prestigious award, the welcoming atmosphere sphere of whitefish, the great snow conditions, and the varied terrain offered by the mountain. If you want to get out and ski one of Montana's best mountains this winter, whitefish season passes are available at a discounted rate of $660 until the end of the month. Some blank walls in a Billings parking garage turned into a canvas for one local artist, allowing her to tell the story about Billings through painting. The murals are on the walls of Park 3 at 2nd Avenue North and North 27th Street. You can download an app that allows you to scan the art and watch a video, giving more of the history behind the paintings. Artist Terry Porta painted the mural, showing Billings' history, the present and the future. Billings grows, and in my impression, my artistic idea, I think that we're going to grow. There's going to be color, there's going to be excitement, there's going to be art all over the buildings, there's going to be a waterway somewhere in this town. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of additional stuff here, and this 100 years from now is kind of my dream of Billings. And Terry says she received help with pictures and information from the Western Heritage Center. A plaque in front of the building explains how to use the app created by Strata Art. Before we take a break, we're learning more about the up-and-coming USS Montana following a visit from two crew members. Q2's David J has more from the commander on the future submarine with the Montana name. We are capable of depths uh, in excess of 800 feet, speeds in excess of 25 knots. We can conduct strike missions. We can launch the Tomahawks, uh, conduct clandestine operations, special operation forces, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. Commander Michael Delaney describes the capabilities of the Virginia-class submarine. This is video of the USS Washington. The USS Montana is under construction. The way they build the submarines these days is if you imagine slicing them like a zucchini and then putting them all together, and that's kind of how they build our submarines. So there are a couple modules spread out across the United States right now and slowly coming together. The commander came to Billings on Thursday along with electronic technician second class Evan Glenn from Bozeman. About 60 of the future crew of 135 have been training. Mostly right now we're an increment of uh, nuclear trained, a handful of officers, and then nuclear chiefs as well. I'm surrounded by some of the hardest working individuals I know. You're so engrossed in your work, out there doing your mission, that you don't even realize you're not seeing sunlight for days at a time. The submarine has the unique ability to operate forward, uh, undetected, uh, where surface ships and aircraft carriers cannot. There is no question question on the value of a submarine to the Navy and the Department of Defense. David J, MTN News, Billings. And the USS Montana is scheduled to be ready in May of 2020. 